the place Counter-Strike began. Across 20 years of competition, CS has seen some of the most legendary moments in the history of esports. But let's turn back the clock. Oh, there's gonna be some nostalgia, Chad. Get your tissues ready. Oh. Twenty-two years ago, on December 18, 2001, CPL Winter 2001 began. This tournament would come to be known as the first ever major championship in Counter-Strike history. But first, I need to give a big thanks oh. to Leadify for sponsoring this video. Leadify is an amazing tool that allows you to track and celebrate your unique Counter-Strike accomplishments. It tracks your personal bests and gives you after-match reports to see how well you did. They even have these little achievement badges that portray your accomplishments from any specific match. You can use the compare feature to compare your performance with your friends. Their special Leadify rating uses advanced statistics to reward smart plays and ignore useless frags, giving a more accurate representation of how you did in the game in one single stat line. And hey, even if you're not a number I like Litify. Why? Because we did the I am Sydney qualifier game. Everybody was saying that I played trash. I checked the Litify ratings. Boom. On top. You already know. Top of my team. Together with Kenny S and Natus Sphinx, by the way. Top of the team. Third one on the server. It is what it is. Person and you prefer the substance of the game. W Litify. Game, Leadify automatically finds your best play from each match and sends you a highlight generated by All Star. Thanks again, Leadify, for sponsoring this video. Follow my. That's why people use All Star. I hate when I use when I do Wrangler and it's an All Star clip because why the hell do they take away the hut? It's so annoying. Leadify automatically finds your best play from each match and sends you a highlight generated by All Star. Thanks again, it. Leadify, for sponsoring this video. Follow my link in the description or the pinned comment to sign up for free today. The format of this tournament is something that is important to understand to get the full context of the events. CPL Winter 2001 was played before the days of MR15 in short round times. Each round was two and a half minutes long and the games were played first to 13. They played double elimination and every match was a best of one. The map pool was also a bit... Once again, all the people from Valorant saying, oh... You always say that Valorant copied your game and now you copy us, MR12? No, we're going back to the roots. This is where we started. We're just going back to what we had, all right? Strange. They had a few familiar- MR12, that's us, that's CS. MR15, that's CS as well. It is what it is. Your faces, Nuke, Dust you can't Q, win. Train, Cobblestone, and Inferno. But along with those five were Prodigy, Fire, Mill, and strangest of all, Aztec. The other weird thing about this map pool is that they didn't pick and ban maps like now. The map was set based on the round of the tournament. For instance, what? in the first round, everyone played on Cobblestone. Why is this tournament considered the first ever major? Well, it's because of its prize pool. $150,000 is more money than anything that had been offered in Counter-Strike before. At the time that CPL Winter 2001 was held, the second largest prize pool in CS history was a little under half of this, with WCG 2001 $70,000. Bro, 150k and whatever, 20 years ago or something? That's so much, no? Like, if you put it into perspective with inflation and everything, that's close to what we what we have right now in prize pools, probably, right? Dollar prize pool. Notice how I said at the time of CPL Winter, not before. I remember buying my car couple of years back for 50 bucks. Where have we gone, bro? Mother sucking inflation, dude. That's right. The two largest Counter-Strike tournaments ever were being held on the exact same days on uh -oh. opposite sides of the world. All right. Now that the stage is set, let me introduce you to the people who showed up to compete in the largest NIP? CS tournament ever. The favorites to win this tournament were Ninjas in Pajamas. At this point, this team was not a major organization, it was just a Swedish gaming clan. This Swedish super team formed out of the best players from the region, featuring recognizable names like Heaton and Potty, as well as old school Swedish legends AHL, Hib, Median, and Veslin. Just before CPL Winter, NIP kicked Norwegian superstar Executor due to him lacking the drive to practice. Executor didn't just quit though, he teamed up with the second best Swedish team at the time, Game Online. But it wasn't just the Swedes that came to play. An American squad called Extreme 3 also attended, and they were nothing short of a powerhouse. This team featured the core- Any of these guys still around? Bullseye, KS Sharp, Rambo, 
or of Rambo, K-Sharp, and Bullseye that would go on to become Team 3D, along with NA Old School Legends Big Dog and Chameleon. Weirdly enough, two more players who would go on to become Team 3D members were in attendance, although they were pretty much just carrying their teams as far as they could go. Moto, the player who has a call out an Inferno named after him, led the team Dominion of Pain. Shagwar, a very influential player in the competitive scene, was now playing for a Canadian team called Infamous. An early SK gaming roster was in attendance, having signed BDS's squad called Geek Boys the team known mostly from their classic frag movie, Frag or Die. BDS is an interesting guy. He is not only a player, but he's credited with creating the first real demo play. Do you know what they were? So many names. This is when they were at the top, right? This is when they were committed their life to CS. They were at the top, they participated in a, in a huge tournament, 150k prize pool. But how many of them are still around? Like, uh, uh, for me, for example, like, I remember, like, two names or something. I know Heaton, Moto. It's like your, 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 your professional career. It's so short-lived now as a pro player. Because metas move on. Maybe you get a little bit slower reaction time and stuff. If you don't do the switch to, like, streaming or coaching or something, where do you go? What do you do? Forrest is still here. True. Player, a program called Geek Play. He also went on to go into management with SK Gaming after his time playing there. Now let's get to the event. Our four teams are on a collision course with each other. The ninjas absolutely demolish their first round opponent, True, winning 13 to 1. X3 and Games Online fire back, both of which winning 13 to 0 in their opening match. SK also progresses with fairly little resistance. In the second round, NIP falter against an American clan called RDW, but manage to steady the ship and win 13-10. Extreme 3 have to play a team called Massive Attack in the second round. This team was relatively unknown, but they were very good. The legendary Norwegian Quake 2 player Dark played for this squad, as did a young talent named Nikon, who would go on to do big things in Norwegians of America. Ooh. It would be completely respectable if this game had been close. In fact, in hindsight, even a loss wouldn't be the end of the world. But of course, X3 didn't lose. The best efforts of Dark and Nikon only netted MA three rounds. Oh, and Games Online? They make it to the third round. Well, they don't just make it to the third round. GOL trounces their opponent without letting a single point through. Damn. Damn current oh my god, good that I didn't stream on that day, bro. That would have been a knife giveaway right there. 13 0 Jeepers. Only 26 and 0 in rounds in this tournament. <sighs> SK progresses with little trouble once more against Shagwar's team, <laughs> Infamous. We're now in winner's round three. The winners of these matches makes it to winner's semi-finals. Extreme 3 play against Dominion of Pain, featuring their future teammate Modo, and stomp them 13-1. Games Online faces their first real challenge with the French squad Armor Team, and manage to hold them to four rounds. SK plays Infernum, a young Austrian- I wonder how many of you guys watched those games. I wonder what the percentage is. If I ask now, a lot of people will troll, but I didn't watch these. I wasn't in- I, I joined CS super late. Super late. I joined CSGO because my friends, uh, uh, like my friends group, usually we played Call of Duty, Battlefield, field and then they said yo let's play some cs and i was like what and that was when 2015 joined early 2015 very very late and then went down the rabbit hole <laughs> but not the gameplay rabbit hole the skins rabbit hole where <laughs> oh my god max skillet and t t with milk and sugar they both got me into skins <laughs> and ruffle monster i think i was always hovering around like mg Korean team whose core would go on to become Which the not first too bad. ever iteration of mouse sports and shockingly they i was always maining aztec and cobblestone oh my god Aztec, I love you. Get upset. And further forwards, SK loses their first match in the loser's bracket as well, to one of the two teams that Game Online beat 13-0 earlier in the tournament. SK is out. NIP meets an English-Dutch mix team called Four Kings. Heaton, one of the stars on NIP, really did not like Four Kings. Huh? They had a larger organization supporting them, and as such, they were able to go to more tournaments. And Heaton resented them for that. And he got that anger out. In this match, one of the most iconic moments in Counter-Strike history occurred. Here is Heaton versus Four Kings. No way. Heaton is just picking off Four Kings here as they try to fight Heaven's back, so bad. but it's futile. And remember, Four Kings was not just a random pickup team. This team had organizational backing. NIP were unstoppable.
If that doesn't tell you enough about how this match went, NIP go on to win 13-5 against 4 Kings and secure a spot in the semifinals against Game Online. In the semis, X3 face off against Infernum and win decisively 13-6. But what I'm sure you're more interested in is on the other side of the bracket. Game Online versus NIP. This is the beef match, Executor facing off against his former team. Uh -oh. And I would love to say that this match was beautiful, that it was a- Wait, what? Hypnotic? Four Kings owned us at CPL 2K4. Are you CS uh, 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 1. Pro? No shot. Owned us. Blood thinks he's a pro player. Oh yes, 1.6. Damn, dude. Respect, bro. <laughs> a piece of art. But the truth is, I don't know if it was. These matches took place so long ago that, for most of them, the demos do not exist anymore. This legendary match is a piece of lost media. Damn. All that I have is a number on a webpage. Shut the fuck 13 up. How does, how does stuff like that vanish off the internet, bro? At a major. Like, nowadays, it's, 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 everything is a lot better archived, right? Like, the, the major, the current majors will never, ever be gone. Lost media, that's crazy. Dick Pat enhancement clip. Will we ever, like, in 20 years, will that clip be not findable anymore? This is a major. You can't find the game. That's insane. For NIP. In the loser's bracket, Game Online wins their first match, and in loser's semis, they face off against none other than Massive Attack. That's right, Massive Attack, after losing in the second round of winners, has fought back and won five straight matches to stay alive. They now face off against their toughest challenge yet, Game Online. DE Train, the match is dead close. Ooh. It goes to overtime, and Game Online pulls it out, winning 16-14 and securing their spot in loser's finals. Three teams remain. Game Chat, on where were the matches on? Where did you watch a game like that back in the day? There was no Twitch. Was it inside of the game? On HLTV? Aha! Online, Extreme 3, and Ninjas in Pajamas. Executor, K-Sharp, and Heaton. Or GoTV, yeah. I remember watching all the majors back in the day on GoTV. But not, not, not because it wasn't on Twitch or something, but for the drops. <laughs> I remember every time I had like... And when a major was going on, I always was having the stream on, on my phone on Twitch. And in case I saw that they played Cobblestone, if I didn't care about the game, right? If it was like random teams that I didn't cheer for. I always was looking and if it was uh, a Cobblestone, boom, straight to PC. Opening it up in GoTV, in Twitch, in Steam TV, everywhere. You know, to, to triple the odds, <laughs> even or just to make sure that you have a, your ticket in. Oh, yeah, yeah. X3 and NIP play in winner's finals, and once again, NIP prove that they are just a level ahead of everyone else. 13 to 6. Wow. Extreme 3 versus Game Online to see who gets another shot at NIP in their superstar lineup. And X3 pull it out 13 to 9. And then there were two. NIP wins, right? The grand final is on Nuke. Extreme 3 is not falling apart like they did in Winners, they're making this one count. Uh -oh. Or maybe NIP is just feeling the weight of $150,000 on their backs. The game is dead even. We are going to overtime. Oh my god. Extreme 3 win the first. And the second. I wanna see the rounds! And the third. One more round. They pull it out. Oh. Extreme 3 wins 16 to 12. But wait, Best of three? the tournament isn't over. X3 came from losers. NIP still have their second tournament life. They have to do it again. Reset. Zero, zero. DE nuke, $150,000 on the line. It starts off the same. Not a fiber tilting in either team's favor. Dead even, 11, 11. NIP win the 23rd round. They are one round away from greatness. Surely. But they're also one round away from overtime. The heartbreaking thing about this is that this last pivotal round is another piece of lost media. No! The round that changed Counter-Strike forever. How? Gone, like... How? What? That's crazy to me. Not a single... I guess there were no screen recorders and shit, right? But on HLTV, bro, how did they not save it? Bro, the, the grand finals of, of Major. <laughs>
I literally have it. <laughs> yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> On your USB drive, right? Jeepers. Ashes in the wind. Only <laughs> in the memories of those who were present. 1311 NIP. Game and set. Suck. Maybe if this grand final had ended differently, X3 would have became the big esports org, and NIP would be a weird, nostalgic clan name. Probably not, but that $25,000 difference in prize money goes a long way. Wait, 25k, that's it? I thought it's 150k tournament, where's all the money? Or is it 25k more? Is it? This NIP roster was picked up by SK Gaming I... shortly after. Who negotiated this deal? None other than BDS. No matter the outcome, this match between X3 and NIP would go down as one of the greatest matches of Counter-Strike ever. To quote the founder of Gotfrag, Trevor Midway Schmidt, This match was the beginning of professional Counter-Strike. Everyone who was there understood that CS had changed forever after the match took place. No longer was CS the second game behind Quake. No longer was CS a slow game that no one could understand or follow. CS had arrived. Thank you. Oh, baby. All right. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I put literally everything that I had into it. <laughs> um, I think this is so good at storytelling, no? It didn't feel man. like 12 minutes. It's hard to hook me nowadays on a 12 minute video. Like usually I say, nah, bro, cut that shit up to 30 seconds, sum it up, put it into a TikTok. 12 minutes just like that. That was fantastic. That was nice, boys. Leave penguins some love. You already know.